Hello everyone, Shimmer here, and today I'm bringing you a guide on the new companion system coming with the new Blackwood chapter of Elder Scrolls Online. There will be time links in the About section below, so if you want to skip over some parts, you can, but let's get to it. First off, you will need to purchase and own the new Blackwood chapter of Elder Scrolls Online in order to access this new system. Chapters are not like DLCs, so you will not have access to the chapter with an ESO Plus subscription. It will require an extra purchase. So what exactly are Companions? Companions are unlockable NPCs that will follow you around as you adventure. You can set them to Tank, Heal, DPS, you can outfit them in their own powerful gear and customize their looks from their outfits to their mounts. They will also even warn you when you're standing in stupid by telling you to roll or block, remind you to take a potion when it's available, Quick, drink a potion. and are overall pretty fun to have around. Companions also give you a character perk, which will be dependent on which companion you have active at the time. Companions cannot be summoned during combat or while mounted, but they can fill an empty spot in a dungeon group. If you're in a dungeon group and a fourth player does decide to join the group, the companion will despawn. You cannot have a merchant and a companion active at the same time. Only one or the other, but you can have a pet active. Of course, there are also certain areas where you cannot have active companions, which are PvP areas, solo arenas, or in housing instances. Also, you need to be very careful because each companion can observe you doing things that they either approve of or disapprove of. If they witness you doing something that they do not like, it can deteriorate your relationship, and if your relationship gets too low, they can choose not to hang out with you if you summon them, or may randomly unsummon themselves when you have them active. So don't be a <laughs> At the launch of Blackwood, there will be two obtainable companions. Miri Elendis and Bastion Halix. In order to unlock these companions, you will need to complete their quests. When you complete their quest, they will be added to your collections and you'll be able to summon them. Companions are character bound, so you will have to unlock them on each alt that you wish to have companions on. Their level progress, however, is account wide, so you will not have to grind levels on each character, only unlock them. They each have a unique perk and buff your character whenever they are out and active. Miri will grant you Miri's expertise when she's active. This will give you a 30% chance to provide additional loot from hidden compartments in treasure chests found through treasure maps in the Overland. The treasure from these hidden compartments may contain additional gold, sellables, or recipes. Bastion will grant you Bastion's Insight which is a 30% chance to improve potions looted from chests and monsters. There are also companion-specific achievements that you can complete. You can see those by going to Achievements, Blackwood, and Companions. Here you will see all the achievements that you can do with your companion. Completing specific achievements with them will unlock a keepsake collectible item that will give your character the perks permanently, even if they aren't summoned. So let's take a look at where you get these quests. If you want to unlock Mary first, you will go to this location here, where you will find her standing here. Take her quest and complete it to get her as your companion. If you want Bastion as your companion, you can find him here at this location. Once you complete his quest, he will be available as your companion. Now that you have a companion, you will need to summon it. Open your collections menu and go to the allies section. Underneath, you will find a companion section. This is where you will find and summon your new companions. Once summoned, you can access your companions menu by speaking to them. There is also a dialogue that you can go through with them to learn more about their backstory. When you open their menu, the first screen you are taken to is the overview section. At the top, you will see their current level and XP bar. Companions gain XP by being out when you're killing enemies. Below that, you can assign an outfit which you can customize at an outfit station. When you're at the outfit station, there will be a new icon here for your companion outfit. Your companion will have access to any armor style that you currently know. Next, you will see their ability bar. 
They will set off their abilities in the order that you assign them and as they become available. Here you will see their perk, and right here is the rapport box with an arrow showing you where your current status is. Like I said before, there are things that each companion likes and dislikes. Now, I'm hesitant to mention specific things that each companion likes and dislikes because by no means has anyone discovered a full list of things they approve and disapprove of. Uh, and some things that were on the list were patched out, and of course this list can change at any time. I will probably do a guide on it later once it's more concrete, um, but I will mention some things that they liked and disliked uh, on PTS as of this week. But just be advised that these things could change. There also seems to be a cooldown on losing and gaining rapport, so if you found an action that increased or decreased rapport, you may have to wait five minutes to do it again for another rapport increase or decrease. So as of now, uh, Miri likes uh, visiting Daedric Delve or Public Dungeons, Fighters Guild Daily Quests, crafting an alcoholic beverage, reading a book from a bookshelf, gathering items from Psychic Portals, Antiquity Excavation, visiting the Brass Fortress in Clockwork City, stolen drinking and reading related treasures, murdering goblins, murdering large snakes or serpents. Her dislikes are gathering flying insects, killing uh, friendly NPCs or uh, using the Blade of Woe, visiting the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, completing a sacrament, and traveling by boat and um, the boat was patched out or bugged, so uh, boat travel may not affect her uh, when it goes live. Bastion, uh, his likes are visiting Ivea, reading a book from a bookshelf, Mage Guild daily quests, gathering items from Psychic portals, antiquity scrying, visiting Arteum, uh, killing bandits or cultists in, a ran in random encounters, killing dolmen cultists at the beginning of a dolmen event, looting treasure chests and boss chests, visiting crafting stations, gathering runestones, and taking certain daily quests. Uh, Bastion, his dislikes are murdering uh, friendly NPCs or using the Blade of Woe, uh, stealing and pickpocketing, and looting thieves' troves. Now again, these are examples of things that were found on PTS um, that they liked or disliked, um, but again, these could change at any moment. As their rapport increases, you will unlock quests from them that you can complete. Unlocking and completing the final quest that your companion grants will reward you with a house guest collectible item, allowing you to place them in your home to use as a house guest. Next, click on the Skills tab. This is where you will find all your companion skills. Each companion only has one ultimate. Their skills level the same way your character skills do, from being awarded experience based on the skill or weapon that they have equipped. Guild skill lines increase through completing daily guild quests for the companion. I'll go through the skills here so that you can see them. You can pause the video to read them if I go too fast, but I want to be thorough. If you don't want to see the skills, you can skip to this time in the video.
The last tab here is the companion collectible window. Here you can assign a costume for the companion to wear if you don't have an outfit made for them and assign the mount for them to ride. You can set them to ride the same mount that you're riding. They will have access to the same costumes and mounts that you do. Now let's talk about companion gear and equipment. Open up the companion menu and on the left here you will see their equipment section. They have the same gear slots available on them as you do, however they, they do not have a second ability bar, meaning that you can only have one whip weapon equipped on them at a time. Companions have different gear than you do and their equipment won't have a level on it. Uh, it also does not degrade during combat so you will not need to repair their gear. You cannot enchant it and you cannot upgrade it. The only way to increase the power of a piece of companion equipment is by looting a higher quality piece. They also have different traits on their armor. Aggressive will increase damage output. Augmented will increase duration of buffs. Bolstered reduces damage taken. Focus increases critical strike rating. Prolific increases the ultimate regeneration. Quickened will reduce ability cooldowns. Shattering will increase penetration. Soothing will increase healing done. And Vigorous will increase maximum health. Companion gear cannot be crafted, but it can be found mostly from boss mobs. There are a few select profession vendors throughout Tamriel that you can purchase a white set of companion gear from. The white companion gear will not have traits on it. So now that you have your companion, how exactly does combat work? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is get out there and start fighting a mob and they'll join in. Pressing Y while fighting an enemy will have them engage that specific target or set off their ultimate. If your companion dies during combat, you can resurrect them with a soul stone or they will automatically resurrect themselves after combat ends. And that's it. Overall, I find that companions are pretty darn fun and can be extremely useful, especially to newer players that are facing difficulties playing the game alone, if that's how they're playing. Um, I do see the potential for a little bit of issues uh, with the crafting station areas. Uh, if a lot of people are crafting and they start piling up on top of each other, um, especially when one of the companions specifically approves of visiting crafting stations. Um, but all in all, I do feel like they're a terrific addition to the game. Uh, what do you guys think? What are you most excited about? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and sub if you enjoyed or if it helped you out any. And click that bell icon to be notified when I have new videos go live. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you in Tamriel. Bye.